Hello again. Welcome to another Writerly Witterings. And today I'm going to be talking about these two little beasties. The reason being, so many people have written in and asked what the two pens are like. Do I prefer the medium nib or the fine nib? I thought it'd be worthwhile just showing you what they're like and talking about it for a little bit. So here we go. And I have two fabulous Visconti fountain pens. This one I've now had for, I think, five or six years. And I got it originally because I had a job at Exeter University and I was going in every day. And I used my Conway Stewart Churchill, which is an absolutely delightful pen. But it has two failings for me. The first is that it is a glossy pen. As you can see, it's got a beautiful shine. Um, I've got a whole bunch of separate small LED lights here, so you're getting little pinpoints of light all the way down the barrel. Um, that's not because it's got any design on the barrel. It's just smooth, clear plastic. It's beautiful, but the trouble is it was starting to get scratched, and I didn't want to damage my lovely old Conway Stewart, because I bought this with the first decent set of royalties I had back in 1998. The other problem with it is it takes quite a time to open it. And that really is a bit of a pain when you're in a meeting or if you're talking things through with someone. So when I got my Visconti, the thing that I absolutely adored was the speed of opening it. Now, I should just say, these two pens have been reviewed quite extensively in two other videos. If you look at the screen now, you'll see that there's a link. If you hit that on your computer, it'll take you straight to those two um, reviews. If you want to wait, or if you're on a tablet or a phone and you'd prefer to wait till the end of this video, that's great. Um, wait till the end, go down to underneath the video and you'll see that there's some links to go to the other videos. So, having said that, this, when I bought it originally, is a nice medium nib. I bought it because I liked the weight of it, I liked the look of it. I prefer, I, I do like the shininess of the Conway Stewart, but this is made out of lava from Mount Etna, both of them are, uh, where the lava's been powdered and somehow incorporated into a sort of rubberized um, product. And it means that these things are just about indestructible. I've dropped, this one I've dropped and kicked a couple of times, but there is no mark on the barrel or the cap of either of them. I also like the fact that they're mildly hydroscopic. So when it's really hot weather, you can pick up the pen and it will absorb a little bit of the moisture from your hand. That just means that when you're writing, it doesn't get slippery because it's hot. It stays really comfortable to use. I also like the fact that they've got enormous ink reservoirs in here. Both of them are vacuum fill, both of them very easy to work, but they really work extremely well. So what is the difference? I have been asked many times, what's the difference between the size of the nibs? This is a medium. Don't know if that's going to be picked up by the camera too well. I'm getting a sort of a, a nod. Um, but let's just put it like this. This is a medium nib. Sorry, it's always difficult to write neatly when you're filming the writing. It feels very good. It does. It is extremely smooth. There's no toothiness or anything. It's very, very smooth. It just glides over the paper. Viscontis tend to be quite wet writers. You can see here that um, even though I finished writing some time ago with this uh, orange, I think it's Hiroshizuku ink, um, it feels very smooth. You do have to be aware with a medium nib that it is going to put a lot of ink down. You do need to be quite careful and make sure that it's dry before you turn the page. Not a great problem as far as I'm concerned because it still feels so good. It is such a smooth writer. Absolutely lovely. Now, one thing that you will find, though, is when I write here, put a bit of pressure on, there is some line variation, but not a huge amount. And that's because it's putting down a lot of ink already. This, on the other hand, is a fine nibbed Visconti. This nib, when I write, is 
It has a little bit more toothiness to it. It's a little bit scratchy, only very, very minorly. But because I'm used to medium-sized nibs, it, I, I, I am aware of it as having a different feel. So, but it still feels great. And it does. It is still quite a wet writer. So if I go back there, which I wrote a little while ago. But I like wet writers. It's the way I, I prefer to write. What is good, though, is if I put a little bit of pressure on the downstrokes, you can tell the difference in variation. It's quite obvious. And it is just a bog-standard, ordinary Visconti nib. But it does allow you quite fine lines or quite a lot thicker. So the obvious question which everybody asks is, which one do you like the most? And I can honestly say I really haven't got a preference. I've never liked thin nibs before. I've never liked fine nibs. I've got one fine nib that I bought on a cross pen many, many years ago, 30, 40 years ago. And that's great because I always used to fill that with red ink and I'd use that for editing. Now, I tend to find that when I'm writing a book, I use the fine nib. And that's just because it means that uh, while I'm writing, I can get more words onto a page. It's not because I'm tight-fisted, but it just seems to make a lot more sense. The FASA pen I use all the time for all kinds of research. Um, I use it for signatures with contracts. I use it for things that have to look that little bit more impressive. But in terms of a preference, I can't say I have one. I love the line variation on the thin... I love the feel of the medium nib. So I think it's horses for courses. You pick what you want. What I would say is please do not buy a pen like this over the internet. If you can, go into a shop and test it out. Give it a feel, see what you think. Then, by all means, buy it on the internet because there are a lot of very good suppliers on the internet. Cult pens I like a lot, um, mainly because they're based in Devon and I do believe that it's a good idea to support your local shopkeepers. But... Um, there are lots of other firms who sell Visconti, but I would say that if you want a pen that's always going to look good, that isn't going to get scratched, if you want a pen that will always write straight out of the tin, as I say, it's, then either of these are ideal. If you want a pen that you can unlock and open really quickly, so when you're taking notes in a busy meeting, these pens are ideal. And also, if you want to just personalise it slightly, I do like the fact that Visconti give you the option of taking off the Visconti logo from the top and you can add your initials or you can add stones for your birth... Um, do they call them birth stones? I forget. You can get zodiac signs, you can get giant Chinese zodiac signs, anything you want, you can fit it straight on the top. So you can personalise the pen to that degree just for yourself. I like that. It's a silly touch perhaps, but I like it. So there you go. Two excellent pens both of which I use just about every single day. I've had great fun with them. I hope that you do too. Thanks a lot for watching. Apologies for the delay in getting another film up, but holidays, exams for the daughter director, um, dog dying and various other things have really slowed things down this year. But we're back now with a vengeance. So thanks for watching this one. If you liked it, please share it. Put any comments or questions down the bottom. Um, Tell your friends about it and hopefully see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye.